I'm Bob Fine. Uh, and let me let me get start here. So this is me uh, in my studio in Charleston, South Carolina. So I have uh, I've I had a, a thirty plus year career on Wall Street as a municipal finance banker, doing a lot of quantitative analytical stuff. Uh, it was, uh, the last 12 years using Mathematica to do cash flow default analysis and operations over Bloomberg data sets. But we, uh, I, 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 I uh, typically don't like to use the word, but the word, but I'm, I'm retired. So at, at the end of 2018, my wife and I sold our house in Westchester County. I, I was commuting into Grand Central for uh, about 32 or 33 years. And we moved to Seabrook Island, which is uh, one of the barrier islands just, uh, just south of Charleston. And uh, since the March of 2019, I've been, I've kind of, my, my interest in digital photography kind of morphed into using mathematics great digital or computational art. So you can see I'm kind of very proudly standing next to one of my works, which is a, a kind of a golden sphere, which is on canvas. And I had printed, I have a big 44 inch wide uh, Epson P9000 printer in my studio. And uh, I, that what you're looking at is, uh, I, again, cam I, I wrapped, the canvas myself around the frame, uh, and uh, you know it's uh, it's it's it, it, it's very interesting. And uh, no, no offense to uh, to any golfers that are listening, I don't play golf, so this is uh, this endeavor kind of keeps me focused, and uh, and uh, it is very challenging, and I love to do it each day. So again, my. I, my background is again on Wall Street. Let me, I've got a, a statement to kind of orient my, uh, my interest as an artist. And then I'll, I'll, I'll talk about the, the different kinds of rendering I've been focused on, geometric rendering, which well, once you see the images, you'll know exactly kind of what, these, what this means, space colonization, fractal models and perspective. So, it's my background, which I've went, gone over. So th th this is important. As an artist, I play with mathematical algorithms by configuring them in ways that can instruct uh, pixels to, uh, to form images on a computer screen or digital printer that appear lifelike and organic or at a minimum interesting. Like most artists, I think about color, shape, form, dimension, and perspective. Unlike most artists, I think about how to express these attributes as a set of mathematical instructions that map the position of pixels onto the 2D Cartesian space and assign each pixel varying combinations of red, green, and blue color values expressed as real numbers between zero and one. So I know that to any normal audience or 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 non technical or non quantitative audience that, that they would be asleep by now, but I know that you you guys all kind of understand exactly what I just said. Uh, I I, I want to make a, 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 a I think a, a point here because I've been in, in putting this together, putting the presentation together. I've been thinking about the issue of well, am I yeah, you know, I, ideally, I'm I'm starting at the simple, and and through these algorithms, the algorithms are generating something kind of very complex. But it's a little more subtle than that because it's not just simple algorithms, as you'll see as I go through the presentation. Uh, uh, there's still there's a lot I need. There's a lot that needs to happen, and there's a lot I need to think through in terms of kind of uh, in, in terms of managing and, and and getting getting precise images. The second part of this, 
So I work within a, this is important, I work within a small subset of computer graphics, which of course is huge. So I don't do animation. I don't do fo photographic, real, photorealistic re rendering. I don't do game, game creation. I don't do AI. So my, my work is static. I prefer a, deliver, a deliverable that's either a high resolution TIFF or PNG file or a print on fine art paper or canvas that I produced, as I said before, using a high-end inkjet printer. So to, to succeed, my work needs to remain simple, yet have a, a stylistic component that makes the image relatable to the viewer. And, 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 the, and, and, and I, I, on a larger level, I, I've kind of set out an ambitious goal for myself, which is to, is, is, is to take these kind of com computational techniques and, 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 and to explore and see to what extent I, I can create what, what in, the, in, in the real world is considered fine art, something that people would buy at a gallery to hang on their living room walls or alternatively as, as an investment. I know that's quite ambitious and uh, I'm kind of at the uh, kind of beginnings of that. Uh, the pandemic has, has actually allowed me to, uh, uh, I haven't been into my studio in Charleston for, for about six or seven months, just not taking any chances. Uh, but as a result, I've been here at my computer uh, just working on the uh, on, on programming techniques. I want to, uh, uh, as I say, strongly assert the fact that I make no attempt to express any part of my inner being in my work. Uh, I, I, you know, I I read artist statements that that that, that talk about that, and I, my my initial reaction is to say, you know, what does this even mean? So, I just. I, I approach my work purely, purely in the spirit of play and discovery, and I'm very satisfied merely to see form and coherence appear. And I would add here that I think the, the role of an artist is not to express themselves, but to understand and control their work. So uh, in terms of how, understand how, how the viewers are gonna react to their work, you know, not how they're expressing themselves directly in their work. So uh, as an overview to the kind of rest of what I'm gonna talk about, I, or, you know, for the first six months, I, I focused on rendering uh, geometric solids that I expressed algorithmically, I'll show you. And then, and then since then, and I, I, the, the, the key here is that I realized that, well, that what I was doing geometrically wasn't going to have any interest to the 35 or so uh, at art galleries uh, in Charleston. So I, I, I was I started thinking about kind of more organic renderings and shapes. So let me go into the geometric rendering, and I I won't spend a lot of time getting into the detail here, but I, I will say that this stuff is easy, and that you know here's a parametric equation of a sphere where you're uh, re uh, generating the x, y, and z values uh, a, a, a across uh, parameters of zero to pi and, and minus pi over two to, to pi over two. And this is the actual mathematic, mathematica function uh, using table. And then this is the actual, the, the, the function that, that renders the image you can see where I, I first create a canvas where all the pixels are black, zero, zero, zero. And then I map the coordinates that, uh, that I generated above, uh, which also have a color value. Each pixel has now has a color value assigned to it of one, 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 which is white, and then map it over the matrix. And then uh, use the image function and the export function to, to render it. And so here we have an example of a Mobius strip where I had a parametric equation of uh, a Mobius strip and, 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 and rendered it. And, uh, now the frame here is, 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 uh, is, is artificial. I created in a Photoshop, but 
but the rendering itself is it looks very much like the print would because uh, if uh, familiar if you're not familiar with inkjet printing they there's essentially two there's a, there's a matte black ink and a photo black ink and I, I printed these out with matte black ink which is very black in other words it reflects very little light so th these are actually stunning <laughs> you know uh, very elegant and uh, I'll show you uh, so here's a sphere and 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 the and the uh, the uh, uh, detail and the and the subtle luminosity here is just incredible. And this and this all shows up, you know, given the quality of the inkjet printer. This this subtlety all all shows up. Uh, this is a sphere too with a slightly different lighting. Uh, this is a, 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 a variation on a Klein bottle. This is a, just a, a, a simple cylinder. Now, so I've had people through my studio. It's it's in a not for, it's part of a not-for-profit organization in Charleston. It's called Redux, and they have open houses and they have auctions. So I've had people through my studio where I've had all of these up on the wall. It looks like a little gallery in itself, and you know the older, more kind of staid, established people are kind of. Don't know, have no idea what to make of it, but 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 there's a class of millennials, younger who who are just kind of just can't stop staring at this stuff, and uh, unfortunately though, they're still at a stage in their career where they're not art buyers. So, I, I, again, it's kind of a transition. I, as I you know, more, as a challenge as much as anything else, you know, how, how do I kind of attract a more kind of staid. Uh, 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 clientele, but uh, my, my wife uh, uh, urged me to kind of start to work with color. So here's some, here's a sphere that's kind of very interesting, kind of very delicate uh, uh, striations in, in the uh, in the rendering. Uh, another one, kind of very bright red sphere, and and the other thing with these with these trigonomic equations. They're, you know, when I say they're easy, I mean all this lighting effect really comes from the math, comes from God. Uh, I, I'm not doing anything here except except creating this a, a gradient here, and and so and 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 and, and taking the, the 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 color values for each pixel and wrapping them with a with a, with a cosine statement, which creates this uh, this sinusoidal a, a, a effect between dark and light. This is interesting. This is a, a, a series of uh, Archimedes spirals, kind of looking head on. I don't know if you can see it on your screen, but it's the, the, there's nothing. These are well, the, it's rendered in 3D and then projected into 2D. Uh, it looks almost 3D here because it's just so hard for the for the eye to focus on the, uh, on, the on on the on the swirl in front and the swirls in the back. And I took the same data set and just rotated it to get this perspective, which I think is interesting. So the organic world, there's something called the space colonization algorithm, which has nothing to do with colonizing outer space, but it's about creating a, a point cloud and then creating branches to reach out to the, the, the points in the point cloud are called leaves. And you can see that you, you create a, 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 a set of, the distance, you, 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 you assume a minimum distance and then you find all the branches and leaves that were in, are within that min, minimized distance. And then you create an average vector off of your last branch and, 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 and run and, 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 and uh, increase it by a, a, a length that's imported. And then that grows to trees, and as the tree grows, the the leaves are deleted. So this is a kind of a progression in terms of developing this algorithm. So here's a simple, simple progression, another simple one. And it, while I'm doing this, I'm kind of it becomes a very complicated algorithm. And there's a and, and there's a, a function, an algorithm. 
uh, it's called a Bre Bresenham algorithm that actually draws the lines and adds the fitness to the lines. And again, so now I'm doing, now I'm rendering this with, with, with 3D vectors uh, projected to the 2D plane. And you can see there's some really interesting kind of lighting effects here. And again, here's, uh, here's kind of simple in 3D and a little more complex. And these things were taking, taking a long time to run. And so what I do now is just to kind of as a matter of course, anything, any function, any matrix multiplication where I'm multiplying big matrices and, and the numbers of the numbers of pixels that are running through this can be easily 60, you know, 16, 15 million, 20 million. So I compile them and that the compiling kind of increases the speed uh, 15 or 20 fold is, is kind of incredible. So what had been taking like hours to run, I can run in like 20 minutes. So here's another one coming more complex. Another one. And this one is, I like a lot and I played with the color here. So now I've got trees. And so with the context is I'm thinking, oh, how do I build a scene? So now I've got trees. So I need, now I need to work on this on the sky structure. So what, there's something, uh, sorry. <laughs> well, okay, so I get this is more, uh, this is more organic forms. I'm not, not quite at the, yeah, at the uh, structure of the, of the sky. These are iterative function systems. The most famous iterative function system is the Bar Barnsley Fern. And th th these are recursive systems. And you can see in, in this Barnsley Fern that, the, that, the, that, that each of the parts is a copy of the whole. And, and there's a lot of literature, there's a lot of literature out there. Kind of, there are a lot of examples kind of rendered using Mathematica for these functions. And so as I'm kind of running short, let me just show you a few. So you can see even that the stems are just compressed versions of, 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 of the whole. And these are, it, Essentially, what's happening is these are a four affine, affine transformations, which involve a scaling, a rotation, and a translation, to get to get these images. And it's it's based on a on a on a set of coefficients, and the coefficients have to be, if if you can adjust your coefficients, you can get these very organic looking shapes, and you can actually solve for the coefficients by 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 creating your own uh, drawing and finding the points and then, and then including the points as a system of solving for a system of linear equations that re to solve for the points that will give you the coefficients. And so this is, this I like a lot. It's very painterly, it's very organic, painterly in the sense that these kind of look like brush strokes. And here's another one that's again, very painterly that I like a lot. So now we're exploring, now I'm exploring, starting to explore cloud structures using structured noise. And there's a, a function in, in, in Mathematica called fractional browning motion. It's a process which you wrap with random function to get a set of points. And it would solve, you know, for, for an X, Y, an X array and a Y array, and those become my coordinates. And, and there's a, and the, the, the famous, kind of noise set is Perl and noise. Uh, you, you can find uh, an example of that under uh, neat examples in the compile function, under the documentation, I'll come back to that. But, so here's fractional Brownian Browning, uh, motion that creates very interesting kind of cloud formations. And when you uh, uh, take your uh, 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 color gradient, and map it from white to the color of your background, you kind of actually, you know, it, it becomes kind of pretty, pretty, pretty amazing to see these things appear, to see these cloud structures appear. So I'm at 120. Uh, and then I started being concerned with, uh, with perspective. And so I've got a, a, a simple uh, pinhole camera 
engine and uh, and John McGee and the, the consulting group can help me put this together. And so what this does is I can I can take the vertices represented by this grid and put them through the engine. And now I've got per, now, now I've got a perspective view of that grid. And this is critical in developing terrain. And so that this is my one of my tree algorithms that I put through the grid and it's kind of very striking. I think and and that you're kind of now at the bottom of the tree looking up at it in, into the sky. This is raw pearl and noise and what you and so this is expressed as luminosity, but you convert the luminosity to a height map. And then you can you can then uh, see this is these are uh, the the points along with an x coordinate and a z coordinate uh, uh, put through the uh, put through the uh, perspective engine, and you can see that th th this this is very evocative of a, of a computer game terrain. This is something I'm kind of fooling around with to kind of get these to get a, a higher frequency in the function to create this kind of grass-like turf, which I think is interesting. I, and here I've kind of have, I've using the, using the pinhole camera really focused in. And this is interesting to me because it's evocative, quite evocative of the marsh grass and the colors that, uh, that are, I can see just just actually out, outside uh, my door. And here I've kind of put it all together. So I got my clouds, I've got my tree, and I've got my terrain. I'm not particularly, you know, I mean the terrain clearly is a work in progress, but I've mashed these together and I, and I you know, it's, it's kind of very interesting. Let me, so, so the last thing uh, are L systems and they're like iterative function systems. And there's a whole lot on L systems in Michael Trott's Mathematica guidebook for graphics. It uses an axiom and a replacement rule and essentially recur recursively what's happening is you, that, that every time kind of you have an F, it's any F is replaced by this set of characters and the F essentially this is like a, a turtle graphic. So F is means you move forward. Uh, the, the brackets are, are, are uh, push and pop uh, uh, commands like you would find in, uh, in, in, uh, in Python. You know, it, he has a very interesting way of, of, of working those in because Mathematica doesn't have directly push and pop. But the plus means rot rotate, rotate at, a, at, a, at, at an, an angle that's input and then move forward and then minuses rotate the other way. And so what these do is create these incredibly kind of elegant and delicate little kind of uh, plants and grasses. If, again, if you get the right kind of axiom. And so what I've, I'm doing now is saying, all right, I've got this and I, I want to use this kind of to, 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 to reflect in my terrain. So I just, I use a translation function and a, and, and a set of uh, r random integers to kind of move, uh, multiply these around. And, uh, uh, and so this is, this is just the first projection, but then I run it through the projection image uh, engine and I get something like this, which I think again, is very interesting. It still needs a lot of work. And there's one kind of, interesting complication that I, I think I've worked through and that when you, when you put this through the uh, uh, perspective engine, the, 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 what were the vertices kind of in the foreground get stretched out. So these all have to be re-rendered through the line function uh, af after the rendering. But again, that's, I, it, that's why I, I come back to say, yeah, it's, it's, it's easy to say, yeah, I'm taking some very simple assumptions and, and generating some you know, complex images or generating a lot of complexity, but uh, there are a lot of kind of details uh, uh, that, you kinda, that you have to deal with uh, to get this thing 
to to render an image that uh, you know again people will find engaging. So I am going to stop the presentation because it's one twenty six, and just quickly look at the chat to see if there are any questions, and hopefully I can find this. Are there any questions? I don't see any. Let me refresh. Oh, I, okay. So what do I, three minutes. Okay. People are saying hi. Yeah. These images are really, okay. Enjoying a lot. Oh, my screen size is, I don't, I don't know. It's, it's kind of wide aspect ratio. It's, the aspect ratio is, is nine by 16. I think it's about 30, 34 inches across. Uh, for the background. Oh God, the, 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 this is from James Cobb. This is a, an important question. Uh, compute Bre Bresenham yourself or instead of using the underlying graphic system. So uh, I started out kind of not wanting to depend on the graphic system. I, I wanted to uh, kind of, uh, kind of do everything myself. And so I, I, you know, there are examples of the Bresenham algorithm online. And I actually found an ex a one line example of Bresenham using the array function in, 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 in a very kind of interesting way in Mathematica. And so I'm, I'm using that, but then I had to, I had to build out, uh, I had to add on the, uh, uh, the ability to uh, create thickness, particularly when I was doing the space colonization, space colonization algorithm. And what I'm doing there is so you could run 20, 25 iterations of the space colonization algorithm to, to grow out your tree. And so I, I, I track, I, I track that met metric, and then in, in, and reverse it so that so that the first branches, so that the first branches drawn have that uh, are rendered with that thickness and then that later branches are 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 rendered with the, with, with the smaller thickness so i ideally i you know i'd like to rely more on the the, the mathematica graphics and i'm i'm starting to do that the uh the uh some of the l system images i've i've rendered kind of using the line system so uh, Dan Hooper, have you considered using measurements of the natural world to your for, form your art methods? Uh, that's very interesting because I haven't quite done that, but I'm kind of, I under, certainly understand, work through just a little bit of, uh, uh, you know, taking, photo, you, taking photographs of plants that, that look somewhat fractal-like and, and actually measuring them. And so the, the idea would be to, to solve for the co- set it up as a system of linear equations and then solve for the coefficients. But I'm, I'm kind of headed in that directions, uh, direction. My, one of my favorite pieces, I mean, I, I love the geometric pieces. I mean, as I said, they're, they draw themselves and they're from God, I, I, you know, they're very elegant. But again, I just love the, I, I love the fractals too. Uh, the moray patterns from uh, from uh, from James Cobb. Uh, I've I mean you can see those in my geometric uh, in, in 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 my geometric pieces. And again, they they, they just draw themselves in there. They're uh, they're fascinating. So it's it's one thirty now. Oh, let's see. It's strange attractors, right? That's part of uh, chaos theory. That's all kind of tied into the fractals and and the uh, and so yeah, I've 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 looked at that. You know, I, I I looked at that at those some of those patterns, and I just wasn't kind of they didn't initially kind of knock my socks off. So again, I've been focusing more on on the the, the organic part. The, the, there's a website called uh, Algorithmic Botany, which you should check out algorithmicbotany.com, which has 
more information than you'd ever, ever need for, for all of this stuff. So, well, thank you uh, for, for listening and I hope you all enjoyed it. Let me, let me say this in closing. Uh, I'm, 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 here's my contact information. Please reach out to me if you have any questions, any ideas on collaboration, any ideas on kind of how to, with the big challenges to kind of disseminate this out into the world. I mean, I think, uh, you know, 20 or 30 years from now, uh, it's, it's gonna be uh, the, the, one of the mainstays of modern art. Uh, so in that sense, ahead of my time, uh, you know, I don't know if I have 20 or 30 years kind of left, but, and, and again, any, anything here is if you, is for sale. So if you're interested in it, uh, you know, email me, we can, we can talk on the phone and, and on Instagram, I'm, uh, I'm at fine Robert. So again, thank you for, uh, for paying attention and, and listening. So Dan, are you there? Yes, sir. Would you like me to close the meeting? What, what do you think? Is it it's, time? If, if you are finished, you are welcome to do so. Uh, I can wait a few more minutes to see if any. Sean in the chat had another question for you. Uh, let me see. If you consider using geometric group theory in your art. The answer is no. I'm not sure what it is. But if, if you, I appreciate, you know, you're reaching out to me and uh, uh, through the, through, uh, through my email and I, I'd love to, uh, to uh, talk to you and, and get, get a little more information on that.